Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. So welcome to chapter 5 which is about states of matter. Chapter 5 consists of subtopics 5.1, 5.2, 5.3 and 5.4. But in this part of the video, I would like to explain about 5.1 which is about gas. So here are the learning outcomes for 5.1. By the end of the lesson, you should know how to explain qualitatively the four basic assumptions of the kinetic molecular theory for an ideal gas, define three gas laws, sketch and interpret the crops of Boyle's and Charles laws, perform calculations involving gas laws and ideal gas equation, determine the molar mass of a volatile liquid using ideal gas equation, Define and perform calculation using Dalton's law. Explain the ideal and non-ideal behaviors of cases in terms of intermolecular forces and molecular volume. And last, you should know how to explain the conditions at which real cases approach the ideal behavior. Okay, back in high school, Mr. Hukamudah belajar tiga jenis states of matter such as solid, liquid, and gas. Okay. So, this is how the particles of solid looks like. They are closely packed. This is how the particles of liquid looks like. And this is how particles of gas looks like. Which is still memang tak packed sangat. Okay. And then, um, the process daripada solid ke liquid. Okay. Dari pepejal ke cecair, we call it as melting. Process daripada liquid ke gas, we call it as boiling. Process daripada gas ke liquid, we call it as condensing or condensation. Okay. Process daripada liquid ke solid pula ialah freezing. The process from solid to gas, we call it as sublimation. And from gas to solid, we call it as deposition. Back in high school, Miss Tahu yang kamu selalu guna equation BB equals to NRT kalau melibatkan gas. Okay, but actually, this equation PV equals to NRT adalah ideal gas equation. But have you ever wondered macam mana ideal gas behave? That's why you need to learn about kinetic molecular theory of gases because kinetic molecular theory of gas will be used to explain the observed behavior of ideal gas and there are four of them. Ada empat basic assumptions of kinetic molecular theory of gases. Okay, again, kinetic molecular theory of gases ni is used to what? Untuk uh, kenal pasti ideal gas punya behavior. So, ideal gas behave macam mana? Ideal gas behave according to these four basic assumptions. So, the first basic assumptions for ideal gas ialah uh, sesebuah ideal gas tu, volume of the gas particles tu, we can say that almost tiada ataupun kita boleh ignore dia punya volume is almost because it's almost negligible because why because gas particles is very small and also kalau compact gas particles compared to its container gas particles kan disusun jauh-jauh dia punya particles dia boleh gerak randomly so that's why banyak sangat empty spaces between the gas particles so we can conclude that in an ideal gas the volume of the gas particles is negligible. Kita boleh abaikan, okay? And also, in an ideal gas, the intermolecular forces, IMF, intermolecular forces between the gas molecules pun negligible juga. Sebab kenapa? Because mereka punya gas particles tu, they susun far apart from one another. And next assumption is, the collisions between the gas particles in an ideal gas are elastic. Okay, sebab kenapa? Sebab gas particles tu selalu bergerak-gerak, uh, they're constantly moving and also there will be no kinetic energy loss, alright? And the last assumption is the average kinetic energy of gas molecules is proportional to the temperature of the gas, okay? Kiranya, semakin tinggi temperature uh, uh, yang kamu kenakan dekat gas, ideal gas, okay? Semakin tinggi dia punya average kinetic energy. But the most important thing yang untuk membezakan ideal gas and next you akan belajar pasal real gas tau. Uh, so kalau the most important thing that you need to know about um, perbezaan ideal gas and real gas is about volume and also intermolecular forces. Sebab in an ideal gas, 
the volume of ideal gas almost tiada and also the intermolecular forces of ideal gas pun tiada juga. Okay? Okay, back in high school, you dah study pasal tiga law of gas kan? Such as Boyce Law, Charles Law and Avogadro's Law. Okay, sebenarnya macam mana PV equals to NRT2 comes from? It comes from from these three gas laws. Boyce Law, dia cakap volume is inversely proportional ataupun indirectly proportional to pressure at constant temperature and number of moles but then if let's say you add two different pressure and volume yang nak dicari uh, you can use this equation which is P1V1 equals to P2V2 di mana satu ni adalah initial pressure ataupun mana-mana uh, pressure yang you jumpa di dalam question yang di pair with the volume while P2V2 ialah number 2 ni ialah the final pressure ataupun the next pressure that you want to find atau the next volume that you want to find in a question. Ada tiga types of graph in Boyce's Law. The first one ialah uh, graph of pressure against volume di mana it will, this graph will show that the relationship between pressure and volume is inversely proportional. Okay. And then the second graph pula ialah graph of pressure against one over volume. Di mana this graph will show that the straight line here that the relationship between pressure and one over volume is directly proportional. And this straight line if taken the gradient of this graph, okay, gradient of this graph will be equals to proportionality constant. K ni adalah proportionality constant and then the last one ialah graph of pressure times volume against pressure di mana uh, this graph akan menunjukkan the relationship between PV and P adalah directly proportional let us try this example for boys so shall we so if let's say you ada chlorine gas yang ada volume of 9.6 ml at a pressure of 7 to 6 mm mercury calculate the pressure of the gas in mm mercury if the volume is reduced to 1.54 ml at constant temperature so kat sini you boleh nampak kan you ada um, dua pressure okay this pressure yang pertama which you know that it is 7 to 6 mm mercury with its respective volume which is 946 ml okay and the next pressure is something that you need to find and the question wants you to find it in millimeter mercury so that means you tak perlu tukar unit pressure kepada atm and the next volume yang dibagi ialah 154 ml and you can use this equation p1 v1 equals to p2 v2 if let's say you guna this kind of equation bukanlah this is not yet an ideal equation ideal gas equation ialah pv equals to nrt so this is not yet an ideal gas equation so if it is not yet an ideal gas equation you don't have to convert the unit yet okay uh, sebab kenapa sebab if let's say you tengok kat sini you want to find the p2 pressure yang kedua so you can just make the p2 as a subject so it will be p1v1 bahagikan dengan v2 and you can see here that Okay, kan soalan mawit in millimeter mercury and also uh, this milliliter, you don't have to change it to liter because look here, you can cancel out the unit. So once you cancel out unit milliliter, so you akan dapat yang tinggal adalah unit millimeter mercury. Okay, so nanti you akan dapat pressure yang kedua ni dalam unit yang dikehendaki soalan which is in millimeter mercury. So kalau let's say uh, dalam soalan macam ni lah, soalan ratio macam ni, you don't have to convert the unit volume because either way, anyway, you can cancel out kan juga this unit, okay? The next gas law that contributes to the ideal gas equation is Charles Law. So, Charles Law, dia cakap apa? Um, dia cakap volume is directly proportional to temperature at constant pressure and also the number of moles, okay? And the temperature yang dimasukkan sini must be in Kelvin, unit Kelvin, okay? So, kalau you tak tahu unit Kelvin, 
So, if let's say you dibagi temperature in degree Celsius, you just tambahkan saja dengan 273.15, then you will have the temperature in unit Kelvin. That is Charles' law. So, kalau let's say you nak guna equation yang melibatkan Charles' law, there is no exception. Sebab dia dah bagi tahu kat sini, dia dah specify. Back then, time kita belajar pasal Boyce law, dia tak specify nak pressure in ATM, uh, dia nak volume in liter. But in Charles' law, dia specifikkan yang temperature ni must be in Kelvin, no matter what happen. Volume tak kisahlah, nak milliliter ke nak liter, tapi temperature must D in Kelvin, okay? Um, so, kalau let's say you nak melibatkan proportionality constant, so it's going to be V over T equals to K, but then if let's say uh, you ada dua different volume and temperature, uh, you will have to use this equation, which is V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2, di mana V1 ialah initial volume and T1 ialah initial temperature and number 2 ni denotes the final ones. There are two types of graph in Charles Law. So, apa yang bezanya hanyalah uh, unit temperature tu. Kalau let's say unit temperature tu in Kelvin, tak ada masalah. You can just start at zero and then just buat this one straight line to show that the relationship between volume and temperature in Kelvin is directly proportional. But then, if let's say you're going to unit temperature in degree Celsius, you kena convert lah, kan kita dah start, uh, kita start the first graph ni in Kelvin, in 0 Kelvin, right? So, this is 0 Kelvin. So, kalau let's say you nak buat the in degree Celsius, what do you need to do? You kena convert kan this graph yang start dengan 0 Kelvin kepada, bukan you tak boleh buat in 0 degree Celsius tau. Uh, you kena tukar lah dari 0 Kelvin, nak ke degree Celsius, you kena tolak 273.15. Okay, uh, so that's why kalau 0 Kelvin, it will be, it will be equals to negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. So that's why in this graph, the start of the graph at negative 273.15 to still to want to show that the relationship between volume and temperature in degrees Celsius is directly proportional. For example, for Charles' law, if let's say they bagi tahu a sample of carbon monoxide gas occupies 3.2 liter at 1 to 5 degrees Celsius, calculate the temperature at which the gas will occupy 1.54 liter if the pressure remains constant. So, in this question, kalau you dapat question macam ni, you extract the information where you have two different volumes and two different temperatures, okay? which the this temperature depends on this volume okay and this volume depends on the second temperature that you need to find okay so and the next hint dia bagi tahu the pressure remains constant so kalau let's say you pick up this hint you will know that you need to use the charles law so if you want to use the charles law to find the second temperature Okay, anjing ni cakap, ingat-ingat uh, lah ya, guna this uh, equation which is V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2. Okay, since Charles' law is specifically not temperature in Kelvin, so you need to change the unit 1 to 5 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Okay, so we not change into Kelvin. If it's more than 0 degrees Celsius, you need to add with 273.15. Okay. So, 1 to 5 plus 273.15, so the temperature yang initial uh, is equals to 398.15 Kelvin. Tukar siap-siap. Jangan serabut-serabut kat sini baru nak tukar eh. Sebab kalau kamu serabut-serabut kat sini lah semua benda kamu nak buat. Uh, nanti kalau sal uh, salah jawapan, salah semua. So, you buat sikit-sikit kat sini dulu. Okay, bila you extract the information. So, next you want to find the temperature to in Kelvin. So, the volume, uh, dia tak mention pula nak milliliter or liter. So, we don't care about the volume because anyway, it's going to cancel out the unit. Okay, so we don't really care about the unit of the volume here. So, since you want to find um, T2 in this Charles Law equation, you need to make the T2 as the subject. So, T2 will be equals to V2 times T1 over V1. 
and you masukkanlah uh, apakah V2 di dalam question ni, apakah T1 di dalam question ni, apakah V1 di dalam question ni and then you masukkan. And after that, you will realize that you can cancel out the unit of volume here. So, what will remain ialah unit Kelvin for the temperature. So, don't forget, once you have got your answer, okay, you jangan lupa unit. Unit apa for this temperature, unit dia in Kelvin. Avogadro's law ni, dia cakap yang volume ni is directly proportional to the number of moles of gas present at constant pressure and temperature. If let's say you nak selitkan the proportionality constant K, so it will be V over N equals to K. But then if let's say you have two different volumes and two different number of moles, you can use this equation of Avogadro's law which is V1 over N1 equals to V2 over N2. Actually, this is just an extra information je, okay? Kalau let's say you ada one mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature and pressure ni ialah di mana the standard temperature 0 degrees Celsius and standard pressure ialah 1 atm. So, if let's say you ada one mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure, the volume of the one mole of any gas too, it will be equals to 22.4 liter. Okay. So, decimeter cubic ni, unit dia sama je dengan liter. Okay. So, if you look at here, at constant temperature and pressure, okay, at STP, 1 mole of any gas kan, dia kata volume dia 22.4 liter kan. So, if let's say you ada uh, 1 mole of carbon dioxide and then 1 mole of nitrogen gas and 1 mole of argon gas and then ketiga-tiga gas ni berada di standard temperature and pressure di mana dia punya standard temperature 0 degree Celsius. Standard pressure ialah 1 atm. So, you can you can know that this ketiga-tiga uh, gas ni akan ada same volume which is volume dia will be just equals to 22.4 liter. Okay. So, you tahu satu mole of carbon dioxide gas dia punya volume is 22.4 liter. Okay. Volume dia 22.4 liter. Sebab apa? At STP kan satu mole of any gas ialah 22.4 liter. And then, um, volume of satu mol of nitrogen gas sama juga, 22.4 liter at STP. And at STP, one mol of argon gas pun volume dia sama juga, 22.4 liter. So, apakah kaitan this volume dengan Avogadro's law? Okay, we have learned that Avogadro's law, the relationship between volume and number of mol is directly proportional. Okay, so once you know that all of these gases, dia punya volume sama. So since volume mereka sama, dia punya number of mole pun will just be the same according to who? According to Avogadro's law. For example here, the question asks you to determine the volume of hydrogen gas obtained from the reaction of 6.5 gram of zinc and an excess of dilute sulfuric acid at standard temperature and pressure when pressure and temperature are kept constant. Kalau pressure and temperature are kept constant, hint dia kat sini ialah you need to use Avogadro's law. Okay, so sekarang ni um, this soalan, dia tak bagi pun kamu the balance chemical equation. So, kalau kamu dapat soalan macam ni, you need to bina you punya balance chemical equation on your own. So, you tahu kat sini, bila zinc react dengan dilute sulfuric acid akan menghasilkan hydrogen gas. So, you tulislah zinc pluskan dengan H2SO4, you will get H2. And the remaining ialah zinc bersama dengan SO4. So, you will get zinc sulfate here. So, you balance kan chemical equation. Ingat lagi tak dekat chapter 1. You nak balance kan chemical equation, you boleh guna uh, two methods. The first one is bila kamu balance kan mengikut inspection method di mana you inspect satu persatu elements di both sides sama ke tidak. Ataupun yang kedua ialah kamu balance kan ikut um, medium 
acidic ataupun basic. Okay, but in this case, it's just simple. You just by inspection method and thankfully, you tak perlu pun uh, nak bersusah-susah nak balance kan number of mole kat depan sebab dia punya bilangan elemen tu dah sama dah dekat both sides kat reactant dan juga product. Next thing that you need to know ialah dia bagi kamu information zinc. Okay, dia suruh kamu cari volume of hydrogen gas. Okay, the question asks you to find the volume of hydrogen gas. But then, uh, dia bagi information dekat zinc. So, apa yang you boleh buat kat sini ialah you can find the number of mole of zinc. Okay, di mana kat sini dia bagi the mass of zinc ialah 6.5 gram and the molar mass of zinc which you boleh dapat molar mass ni dekat table of molar mass ataupun dekat periodic table of element which if you divide this to you will get 0.1 mole. Okay, so sekarang ni you dah tahu dah the number of mole of zinc adalah 0.1. Okay, so this zinc dia ada 0.1 mol. So, apa yang you boleh buat from this number of mol, you boleh relatekan stoichiometrically with the number of mol of hydrogen gas. Okay, sebab kenapa? Kita tahu at STP, any one mol of gas at STP, the volume is equals to 22.4 liter. Okay, so sekarang ni kita cari dulu Melalui number of mole of zinc, we can find that the number of mole of hydrogen gas. Okay, so sekarang kita buat stoichiometric comparison. We know that kita ada satu mole of zinc dan satu mole of hydrogen gas. So we can say that one mole of zinc is equivalent to one mole of hydrogen gas. So we we know that uh, in this equation, dibagi 6.5 gram of zinc. That means you will not have 1 mole of zinc. Okay, you will have 0.1 mole of zinc. So, if you balance kan this chemical equation properly and you relate kan mereka punya stoichiometric equation, you can know that um, if let's say you ada 0.1 mole of zinc, that means you will have 0.1 mole of hydrogen gas too. Okay. So, from the... Uh, information here dia bagi tahu uh, this reaction happens at STP so we know that any one mole of any gases at STP is equivalent to 22.4 liter but then this hydrogen gas adakah dia bersamaan dengan 1 mole tidak dia bersamaan dengan 0.1 mole so what do you need to do ialah you kena compare kan stoichiometry so you know that Uh, you have 0.1 mole of hydrogen gas. So, kalau 1 mole of hydrogen gas equivalent to 22.4 liter, but in this case, you have 0.1 mole of hydrogen gas. So, the equivalent to berapa? Nak tahu equivalent to berapa, you kena buat darab silang di mana 0.1 mole kalikan dengan 22.4 liter bahagikan dengan 1. Okay? So, the answer here is you will get that the volume of hydrogen gas at STP is 2.24 dm cubic ataupun 2.24 liter.